what's up everyone and welcome back this is week what week are we in week nine eight seven six five four three two one anyways this is actually a special episode and this one is actually releasing a little bit earlier a little bit sooner uh, mainly because this man of god he is a awesome individual not only is he a pastor or a preacher he is an accomplished author not only is, a, is he an accomplished author but he is a basketball coach and he is an NBA sports writer. Yeah, today's guest is none other than uh, Tyler Smith. I kind of had a, a little bit of a, a brain fart when I was <laughs> talking to uh, Pastor uh, Smith, mainly because of the fact that, you know, I'm a big basketball junkie, but at the same time, you know, I, I do think that, you know, basketball has gotten a little bit boring to me now. <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know what it is, what it is, but you know, I think I'm getting old. I, I'm reminded of what uh, what my coach used to say, Coach Ellis. You know, he used to talk about all the time, like basketball is just a boring man sport now. You know, you just throw the ball, the hoop, blah blah blah. <laughs> but you know, um, basketball has has. I'm, it was my first love. Man. First of all, basketball has always been my first love. I played basketball all throughout high school. Um, I wanted to go to college and play basketball, but you know, the Lord had different plans. And, you know, I thank God that, you know, that he has kept me around the game of basketball. So today's guest, Tyler Smith, you know, we had we had a conversation about basketball. We talk about plays, we talk about, you know, what, what kind of sets he's running, you know, because I was a coach and all that good stuff. You know, I'm all in it. But we also had a great conversation about, you know, his ministry, his book, uh, Searching for Seven. Um, and we talk about a lot of these things. Um, and the reason why I'm releasing this episode a little bit earlier is because of his book release. Um, and I want to make sure that you guys um, have an opportunity to um, check out his content, check out his um, his book. I really want you guys to to look at his book, to 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 purchase his book, support this man of God. He is doing some great things. He is he is truly an example of how to be a Christian, um, be bold in your Christian faith, um, in you know in a secular setting. You know, a lot of people, they're not, you know, we kind of tend to shy away from being Christian in all settings. But this man of God, he, you know, he, his purpose is to show that light in these secular settings um, and to be a, an awesome Christian in this um, in this day and age. So um, we talk about the bubble. We talk about everything that's going on. So you're going to enjoy this conversation if you're a sports junkie, if you're a sports head and you love basketball. Uh, so without further ado, please enjoy this conversation between me and youth pastor Tyler Smith of New Hope Christian Church. So I have uh, been involved in youth ministry for about 15 years uh, out of college is when I started and very blessed to get to do a lot of different things. Uh, sports writer for the, the Pacers and IU basketball here in Indiana. Um, have a wife and two daughters at home. There are three and one. Uh, so not much sleep, but it's great. And uh, also a uh, girls varsity basketball coach. Uh, and I just released my first book in June. So um, definitely uh, busy, but I think, you know, every everything that I do has a purpose and um, I enjoy all of it. Definitely. Uh, so are you high school or middle school? Varsity girls basketball coach. In high school or middle school? High school? High school. Cool. Yep. Yeah, I yep. used to be, um, I was an assistant high school coach for um, my home school, or my school back at home, my old high school, my alma mater, uh, Kestrel Heights School. Um, I was an assistant basketball, my assistant, I don't, we didn't really have varsity or JV, we were just assistant men's, okay. um, women's basketball coach. So I, yeah. I understand the pains and <laughs> the frustration and, you know, you can't really say certain things um, and you want to motivate uh, the young women to do well and dealing with those um, emotions is, is very challenging. Um, yes. <laughs> but it's very rewarding at the end of the day when they do um, what they, what you tell them to do. So that's, that's right. awesome. That's awesome. You know, I feel like we can connect on that. Um, so um, what is, yeah, we're just going to jump into the interview questions. Um, what is your why? You know, I, I think ultimately I just want to make Jesus known. Um, mm -hmm. That is, you know, simple statement, but it's, it's what I try to do. And, you know, as I mentioned, all the different things that I've, that I'm involved in, it's not just the church ministry job that I want to do that in. Um, I try everything I can, you know, the school that I coach at is not a Christian school. Obviously the Indiana Pacers are not, you know, some Christian uh, organization. Right. So these, these other things that I've been able to do as well, uh, I, I look at those things as ministry too. And, you know, I try to follow 
um, like it says in Romans, you know, my, my body, my life should be a living sacrifice. And right. so I try to live by that. Um, just make Jesus known in every possible way that I can is, is my why. I love that. And it kind of goes into a little bit what your book is about too, because you talk about trying to, um, give people that opportunity to um, learn more about Jesus in every day in their everyday walk uh, seven days a week. Um, and I love that because, you know, I think that uh, for a lot of people, our whys, um, it varies, you know, it, it could be, you know, wanting to just share the gospel or wanting to, you know, make somebody in our family proud. But I honestly, um, I, I love that, you know, your why is just basically to make Jesus known. Um, I feel like a lot of people forget that in their um, secular jobs or in the secular world, you know, we always talk, tend to, um, you know, conform <laughs> a little bit when you see a lot of Christians um, out there, you know, they tend to conform and just, you know, become something that they're not to try to fit in. And I think that, you know, we miss the mark a lot of times when we're doing that because, you know, we have opportunities to spread and share the gospel in our secular settings. Um, and it's not going to come every single time, you know, you're, you're, I'm pretty sure, you know, when you're interviewing, um, <laughs> interviewing a player or, uh, like Miles Garrett and you're like, Hey, not Miles Garrett, but, um, uh, uh the center for the Pacers, um, Miles Turner. Yeah. Miles Turner. Yeah. Pretty sure you, if you, if you have opportunity to, uh, to, um, to interview him or talk to him, you're not thinking about, oh man, uh, let me talk about Jesus right now after he just came <laughs> off the court, <laughs> you know? You know, it has, you have your moments when you can get personal with people and you can um, do that, but it, it starts with building that relationship with them. It starts with, um, you know, working with them and talking to them more and getting to know their heart. Um, and I, th I feel that a lot of times Christians just miss that sometimes, you know, we just go straight for the, for the kill with the, <laughs> with, yeah. with, uh, with uh, talking about God and stuff sometimes. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, it, yeah. It's so important to, get out of the, you know, Sunday only mindset or the church worship, you know, that's, that's the time that I hear from God or talk about God. Mm -hmm. um, but being aware, that's a big, big message of the book is just being aware of his presence in all things. So if exactly. I'm going to play basketball for a couple hours or I'm going to work or I'm, you know, just hanging out with friends or wherever I am, you know, like Colossians three, whatever I'm doing, I should be doing it with all my heart as working yeah. for the Lord, not for men. Exactly. So that's, that's the mindset. And, you know, some people just ignore the, the Jesus talk altogether. And then some people are like, as you say, go straight for the kill. Like you got to <laughs> figure out the, you know, um, where you're at and, and the right time. Um, but if you are aware, I think you're going to find those opportunities. Definitely. Because there, there are so many opportunities. And like you said, wherever you go and wherever you do, you know, you're going to be that light. You're going to be an example. And you never know who's looking at you, who's watching you, who is saying, hey, I, you know, I've seen, you know, Tyler out there, you know, covering a game and, you know, he's always in a professional setting and he's always, um, you know, talking with, with some decency and with some sense. And, you know, because of that, you know, you never know how people, you know, come to Christ because of it. They can say, oh, well, I like that part about him. You know, maybe I want to, you know, learn more about why he is what he is. And then yeah. that kind of segues into talking about Christ and sharing, sharing the gospel. Um, and, you know, one of the things the Bible says is he who wins souls is wise. And you have to be wise in, 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 in uh, winning souls. You have to be wise in how we talk to people and how we uh, approach people with um, Christ. Uh, we got to have the love of Christ in all that we do. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with you 100 percent with that. So, yeah. Um, so let's jump to um, the next question, which is, what is your testimony for salvation? Um, and yeah, so what is your testimony for salvation? Um, a lot of that, you know, comes to um, part of what your why is. Um, and just to give a little bit of a background, which I should have done when I asked you the question about what your why and where it came from, um, it basically comes from a, a conversation that I had with uh, a fellow podcaster, uh, where, where we were talking and she just, you know, asked me what's my why. And, you know, as we were talking, of course I knew what my why was, but it was like the Holy Spirit just spoke to me and said, Hey, we should, you know, you should do um, a series on what's your why to help people figure out what's their purpose in their drive for life or uh, for anything, especially in this current season with the pandemic. Um, and so a lot of people's whys that I've um, learned, that I've talked to, you know, it's came directly out of their testimony. 
um, mm -hmm. things that they have been through um, that has kind of prompted them to uh, to discover their why and, yeah. and fulfill ministry. Uh, a lot of uh, one conversation I had with a, a young guy, a young uh, minister, you know, he um, dealt with depression um, and mental illness and that birthed his why. Um, and that was his testimony that birthed his, 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 his why. So that's, yeah, that's the premise behind the, the questions, those two questions. And so I'll just go ahead and ask you and I'll just shut up talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think, so I was uh, 14 years old when uh, I gave my life to Christ. Um, I think, you know, I grew up in a Christian home, amazing Christian family. Um, looking back though, it was really a situation where I was known as a Christian kid, mm -hmm. but uh, unfortunately, usually what that means is, oh, this kid doesn't do too many bad things and he goes to church. Therefore he's a Christ follower. Um, and I think a lot of people can, you know, fit into that category. Right. But I, you know, it was even when I gave my life to Christ at 14, I had my ups and downs as just about everybody does. But it wasn't until college. I know that a lot of people are the opposite. A lot of people go to college and, you know, leave church. Mm -hmm. um, but I, my faith actually grew. And, um, you know, the first year of college, I did, I did not go to a Bible college. I went to Indiana State. And it was there that I was really just, you know, God was speaking to me and I was just wrestling with, you know, there's got to be more to this faith journey than, uh, you know, I go to church and I'm a good person. And right. it was, I, th and a lot of people struggle with it and still do the whole, you know, legalistic approach of follow the rules. And, you know, that makes you, that makes you a Christian. So it was much later on that I, I realized, you know, the importance I was surrounded by some amazing people. Uh, I was in this Bible study, um, going into before college in the summer and we'd go around and, uh, I wouldn't do much of the talking, but they would, basically do some evangelizing to people, but they did it in such a loving, impactful way. Um, not like the, you know, hold signs and scream at people, but just like <laughs> gen genuine conversations. And exactly. I was learning so much in those moments. Um, and then going to college and I tell people all the time that I, I loved and I grew from the, the classes at Bible college, the professors, but I, the, the thing that made me grow the most was my peers other Christian people, you know, the late night dorm room talks about yeah. theology. And I can distinctly remember more so than sermons. I can remember people conversations where they would share scripture within what we were going through. Mm -hmm. And that's when scripture would come to life. The most for me is when they're like, it's like that, that verse or that scripture that says this. And I, and those are moments I'd never have forgotten and so for me that, you know, I guess, uh, I would always consider myself a Christian, but growing and growing from college on, um, and, and you're right, it has absolutely impacted my why, because I look back and I see, I remember, you know, in high school, if I was known as that, but I wasn't even close to making the impact that I could have made. So now part of my why is I want to make Jesus known. And if I'm working with students, um, or adults or whoever, um, mm -hmm but particularly students, I don't want them to make some of the same mistakes or really I want them to understand you have an incredible mission field right now. All these students that you're around that you may never talk to after you graduate, but right. in the meantime, this is an unbelievable opportunity. Don't waste it. Use what God has given you for his glory. And, you know, you're not going to reach everybody, but, you know, doing what I can. So I guess that that's where my testimony and my why kind of weave in together. Yeah, I love that because um, I, I didn't go to it. Well, the school that I went to, it was considered a Christian college, but they changed the name. Um, I went to Barton College in Wilson. Um, and we, you know, the same thing, you know, I had the opportunity to, um, fortunately, fortunately enough to become like a student leader on campus to where I was um, known for, you know, the ministerial efforts that I would, that I would do. Um, and because of that, I would always be in, in deep theological conversations with um, some of the kids on the campus. I, I, I'm not that old. <laughs> um, and I'll be talking to them all the time. And I, like you, I remember most of the conversations that I've had and how much that they have impacted my life um, more than I do any sermon during that time period. Because, yeah. you know, those conversations, getting to know someone on a more personal level, you know, that 
is more, I feel like that is more genuine and more important to your faith walk in Christ than anything else in the world, because you're actually in the position where you're, you're acting on your faith, you're acting on what you believe versus, you know, just, you know, staying in your room and, and reading your Bible the whole entire yeah. time and not really interacting with no one. You know, yeah. we have to confess, um, confess and profess our faith um, and also give, you know, give an answer for every situation, every circumstance. Whenever someone has a question, you know, we have to have an answer. So there's time when we, yes, there's time when we do um, study the Bible. There's time when we do pray, but there's time when we should, you know, go and interact with people, um, not be afraid to have those tough conversations with people. Um, if we don't know the answer to the question, you know, it's perfectly fine to say, I don't know, you know, I'll get back yeah. with you. Um, and I think that, you know, in that moment, you know, not only does it show, you know, sh true, genuine um, concern for that person, but it just shows that, you know, hey, I don't have it all together. I'm still learning this thing as we go. Um, and I'm learning, I'm willing to learn more to be a better person for you. And I think that a lot of people, um, you know, benefit from that, um, especially in college. I mean, you know, yeah. in college, you know, your, your mindset is all over the place. Um, and, you know, you're trying to do everything that you can to, to pass, um, to wake up and go to class the next day, uh, to make it to the calf in time before things, before it closed. Uh, it's a lot of things that goes on, but, you know, to be a Christian on, 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 on a college campus, you know, I think that, you know, it requires a lot of, um, a lot of strength and a lot of uh, fortitude, um, a lot of discipline as well. Mm -hmm. Because I, I remember <laughs> I, I was, you know, it was tough, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's doable. Um, I actually um, was a part of campus ministries uh, back at home in my old church, um, Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Uh, and we had a campus ministry um, on NC State's campus. Um, and I was one of the campus ministers there. And uh, I loved it. I, I love campus ministry. That is one of the areas of my heart that I just, yes. you know, have a full fledged love towards because, you know, it's one thing to be a part of youth ministry. Um, but that's another thing to be a part of college um, ministry because you, you, you're you getting that sweet spot. It's like you mm -hmm. said, when many people go off to college, you know, they kind of lose their faith and lose their way. But you're getting that sweet spot from when a person becomes, when they're leaving their teenage years and becoming a, a full-fledged adult, you know, you're helping to shape their mindset. You're helping to yeah. shape, you know, what who they are and what they are in Christ. Um, and I love that because there would be conversations that I would have with, with the college students that would just be so spot on. And I'm yep. like, man, I, I love to see the growth in you guys. So I love it. I love it. Um, so when you were called to ministry, did you answer right away? Uh, if not, then why did you ignore the call and what prompted you to eventually answer the call or acquiesce? Well, it was really interesting how I got called into ministry. It was, um, even when I transferred to go to a Bible college, I went there for sports. All right. I'm not going to lie about it. I was, <laughs> I went there to play basketball and I love the idea of being around other Christians. And yeah. when I was at Indiana state, I was like, I feel like something's happening. God's calling me somewhere else. But I went there just with the intent of playing ball, being around Christians and getting a communications degree, um, getting into sports broadcasting and writing. And, um, after a year at that Bible college, so after my sophomore year, I got a phone call from a local youth group saying, hey, you know, we'd love for you to come. Would you consider coming to start um, a youth program that we don't have one? And kid you not, a couple of my thoughts were, yes, I don't have to work in that factory this summer. And, <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I, I like working with kids. So I get out of the factory. I get to have fun with kids, have no idea what I'm doing, but sure, let's do it. And it was supposed to be just a summer thing. So I guess in a way, if I was called into that, I, I, I answered that call. Yeah. However, it wasn't until probably a couple years into it, you know, I, I was like, hey, I, I want to do this through the school year too. I'm having fun. I got to know these kids. Um, youth group is growing. Let's keep this thing going. I've actually not stopped doing youth ministry ever since, um, <laughs> I've, which is 15 years. Wow. So it was, you know, God uses different things to get you you know, he used basketball for me to get me into eventually youth ministry. And, um, you know, some people know at an early age, this is what I'm called to do. And they, you know, plan for it. Other people, it's much later in life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're calling changes from one year to the next. Yeah. And, you know, I, I go into that in the book as well. It's like your, your daily calling is a much more important thing than what's my career calling and 
um, you know, just a conversation with that topic. But yeah, if I, so I think I answered the call. I didn't really know that I was. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, that, and then he used the actual experience of it to mm -hmm. show me, hey, this is what I want you to do. Yeah, I think that a lot of times, you know, when people are called to do something, God will, you know, put them in the path of the call um, and will allow them to actually walk through the door before they even notice that they're actually answering the call. Yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and that is the exact situation that you went through. You know, I feel that, you know, a lot of people um, have that, you know, in life, you know, people think that, you know, they're, they're called to be this great person. And a lot of times my pastor makes this joke, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, God maybe has called people to just be nobodies, <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people just have to serve and be in the nobody um, in that capacity because that's the, that's the life that they're called. Um, and I feel that, you know, everyone has a purpose. Yes, everyone does have a purpose. Everyone has a, a plan and goal in life, but you know, everyone serves a purpose um, to everyone's purpose. Um, if yeah. that made any sense. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I'm, I, I definitely uh, feel, feel you on that. Um, my call was a little bit different. We, um, I, I knew that I was called for a long time, but I ran from it because I didn't want to um, be um, that typical, um, you're, you're running the mill preacher where everyone knows and um, he's super deep and, you know, nobody wants to be around him or when he comes into the room, he's like, oh, pastor's here, let's be at right. So, <laughs> you know, the whole mood changes, you know, I didn't want to be that guy, but it's funny because like every single time I said, I didn't want to be that guy, it was like, you know, that guy would continually put me in situations where I was that guy. So it was mm -hmm. like, I couldn't run from it too much longer because, you know, God would always put me in the situation where I'm ministering to somebody. I'm talking to somebody about God. I'm always putting God posts on my social media. So it's like, you know, it, it, eventually I ended up answering it, of course. Uh, but it took God literally just showing me a sign and say, hey, this is what you should be doing. You should be here. Um, mm -hmm. You shouldn't be any out doing anything else. This is what I have called you to do. And it answered a dream that I've had, you know, many years ago. So definitely. Um, so what motivated you to pursue ministry? Um, and this would be a two part question. So what, what motivated you to pursue ministry and what motivated you um, in ministry to write your book, to put your book together? Yeah. The, uh, the early motivation, um, like I said, was not maybe what it is or what it be, what it turned into. Um, but I, I did, I mean, very early on, even if I didn't think I was going to stay in it as a career, I was very motivated to help impact kids. And, you know, at a very early age, you know, and, and through college understanding I, I can help these kids again, not make some of the same mistakes that I made and um, try to help them actually live out their faith and make an impact. Um, but yeah, making Jesus known is something I've, you know, I've always tried to do, or I wouldn't say always, but, you know, college on. Um, and uh, so that, that motivation is something that uh, I hope and pray never changes. And, and it involves so much of the things that I do in my life. Um, and, uh, you know, that it's kind of that same factor, which led into the motivation for the book. Um, it's probably four or five years ago that I had this, this idea and this dream to do it. And then started compiling notes. I started to write down chapter ideas, didn't have a title. I knew kind of what, you know, what I was going for, but as I started writing and I started to realize just about everything that I'm writing here fits into this, this category of, you know, looking for God seven days a week, not just at church. Mm. Um, can I help other people along that journey as well? And so the, the motivation behind it then led to, I guess it kind of collided with, uh, with the dream and experience and all this stuff that was um, it's kind of similar to when I, if I'm getting ready to write a message and I have, you know, not being the senior pastor, sometimes I have the luxury of many weeks beforehand, knowing when that date's coming, right. I'll have a topic in <laughs> mind that, that God will give me. And then just about every day, there's like something else that that would fit the message that would fit the message. Yeah. And I feel like in, you know, in a way it all came together, but the, the why the motivation behind it, the heart behind it was I just want to make an offering to God, something that my kids will one day read and however God wants to use it. You know, if 50,000 people read it or if 10 people read it, I can't, it was one of those things where like, I cannot 
not write this book. I just, I just feel this, this motivation and this dream to do it. And then God use it however you want. Right. And I love that. Um, I love that. And I think that, you know, I'm excited about uh, reading your book and, and, and learning more about, you know, your heart behind, you know, helping people, um, you know, further their walk with Christ every day of the week and not just on Sundays. You know, I think that, you know, we, we miss the mark on that a lot of times. A lot of people do. You know, we really, you just want to go to church on Sundays and that's it. But, you know, Christianity is a, it's a faith walk. It's a lifestyle. You know, you have mm-hmm. to do it every single day. Um, it doesn't change. So yeah. um, have you ever wanted to quit ministry? If so, why? <laughs> to this point, I, I don't think so. I've definitely had challenges. I mean, when you're, you know, ministry, you're, you're dealing with people. So <laughs> there's, there's going to be lots of ups and downs. Um, I don't think though, once that decision of, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Um, I don't think I really ever had a thought of quitting. I, I've maybe had some thoughts over the years of what's next, but still ministry related. Yeah. Like, should I, you know, should I be doing something else in the church or should I do a church plan or should I, you know, but it's, you know, the ministry um, mindset, I, to this point, thankfully I've not had that, that thought of uh, possibly wanting to quit. Mm. So do you see um, yourself um, moving away from youth ministry and growing into um, a more uh, senior pastor role or another pastoral role in the future? Um, Probably not in terms of uh, being a senior pastor, unless a couple scenarios, possibly this is probably down the road if it were to happen. Mm-hmm. possibly a church plant with some other friends where, you know, in a church plant, you all kind of share different roles. So maybe I would be the possibly the main communicator, main uh, teaching pastor, but we'd all have these different roles instead of like, Hey, the senior pastor has all this and you just do that. They all kind of work together. That's a bit uh, intriguing to me. Um, or possibly if there's other things I'm involved in and there's a church that's just looking for a teaching pastor where, you know, where they have, elders and leaders and um, I don't know, pastoral carol team or whatever that they can handle a lot of the extra stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, But maybe, maybe in that scenario um, I've, I've seen myself at least considering if there's a, you know, a church that does like sports ministry or, um, you know, I'm big on coming up with ideas for the church. Um, You know, maybe it'd be like, discipleship slash idea guy is that a real thing if I, it was <laughs> oh, that yeah. would be a really that's cool a, job a title <laughs> that's that'd a be a, the coolest job title ever i'm the idea pastor um <laughs> yeah the creative pastor. Uh, <laughs> yeah so some things like that could maybe happen down the road um, uh-huh. but i i still love what i do currently and, and it also allows me to do the other things that i love to do as well so um maybe maybe some something like that would happen down the line Okay. So how did you um, get into uh, sports, sports writing and um, how did it, how did you land the the job with uh, writing for IU hoops, uh, the Hoosiers and for um, the Pacers? Cody Zeller's my guy, by the way, you you like watching him a little bit. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) Um, So I have always been, I've always loved it. I growing up, I thought I would be more into broadcasting and then I felt like, you know, writing was something I was, um, maybe a little better at, or or I I still enjoyed both of them, but kind of a funny story. When I moved to Florida, which was Mm -hmm. 2010, um, which is, you know, right around the Pacer heat battles, by the way. So that was fun. But when I moved there, my thought was these people are not going to like the teams that I like, and I need to be able to talk about them. I need to have an outlet. Right. So at that time I created a separate sports Twitter account and blog and I started podcasting sports stuff. And I just like, this is my outlet. This is my piece of home. Yeah. Well, over, over the course of three and a half years, I was able able to uh, build a nice little uh, fan following. And this guy who started this Indianapolis sports website saw some of my stuff right about the time I moved home to my home church in Indiana. Mm -hmm. He got a job to cover the Oklahoma city thunder for the AP Associated Press. Wow. And he, he had seen my stuff and he's like, Hey, I just, I created the site. It's been going for a few years. I don't want to see it die. Would you want to take it over? And I, I wow. thought about it for like 
three seconds and I was like, yes, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> right. I mean, it was like maybe two weeks after moving home and it was a challenge to move home because I loved where I was in Florida. Yeah. And so I was still wrestling with all of that. And then this opportunity, I was like, okay, okay, thank you, God. That's great. Let's yeah. do it. That was in 2014. So, um, you know, six or seven uh, seasons now I've been involved in it. But uh, I, I joke in the book, um, you know, like Justin Bieber was discovered on YouTube. And I was like, <laughs> I was discovered on Twitter. It's very similar. Like, <laughs> super similar. Super similar. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, man. That is cool. Yeah. I, I, I used to want it to, um, like my dream, of course, like everybody else's dream, and when you're playing basketball, I'd make it to the NBA. But, uh, you know, serious and unfortunate events happened to me. <laughs> and, um, you know, um, we're not there. So, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, I, I really find it interesting that you're able to uh, balance, um, not interesting in a bad way, interesting in a great way, that you're able to balance, you know, ministry and, um, you know, being a sports writer uh, for the NBA, you know, that. I, I have a, a, a pure love for the NBA. Um, yeah. I, I do, I, I, I do joke um, in a couple of episodes um, prior to this one that, you know, it is getting a little bit boring to me, uh, just kind of like the games and everything. But, you know, I feel that, you know, and I, you cover both sides. You cover college and NBA. And, of course, yeah. I'm not going to ask you which one you think is better because you're <laughs> 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 your money rides on it. But um, for, <laughs> but for me, you know, I, I really enjoy college basketball more than I do, um, you know, NBA basketball because the passion is there and it's like yeah. the heart is there. Um, I followed um, Indiana basketball for a little bit, um, but I love um, I love the Tar Heels. <laughs> I'm a yeah. big Tar Heels fan. So, yeah, I, 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 I love it. So, I mean, I, I'm not I'm trying not to get too. Uh, much of a fanboy here and start going down the, <laughs> the path to talk about sports. <laughs> well, the Tar Heels, the Tar Heels took out my Hoosiers in the sweet 16 about what was it? Four years ago or so. Yes. 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 And, and uh, your, your team shot like 112% from three that night. I was yep. just like, what, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> it was the greatest night ever. Cause I, we, we were a team that were not hitting threes like that. And for yeah. some reason that game, we were just knocking them down. I was like, Hey, yep. whatever wins, wins. <laughs> have, have a way to get the W, you know, that's good for me. So, um, so how, uh, what motivates you now to continue um, in ministry and also to continue um, in your um, current role as well as, as a sports writer and everything that you're doing? Yeah, I think just um, seeing growth in people um, and also the opportunities that, you know, that come with, um, I mean, I love having both worlds. I love having the, the church group and, uh, you know, being around a lot of Christians and, and Christian students and having that. And I also love, you know, some of these other opportunities, coaching and sports writing, where who knows who I'm going to meet. I mean, um, different group of, of girls that I coach and their families and fans, uh, people in the school, you have, you know, those opportunities. Uh, and one one thing I love about coaching high school is you you don't get them for just you know three months you get them for four years you get yeah. to um, try to help them grow through that and then you know sports writing um, go to an NBA or, or college game and there's so many different people that you meet constantly or the interactions with fans try to find those little opportunities you know even like my uh, my sports Twitter profile um, I get it you know I'm mention what I do but I mentioned the book I put a little hashtag saved by grace on there yeah. just like li little things that I hope um, people can either ask me about or look into and so I, it's it's very motivating to me um, within this pursuit of making Jesus known to have different avenues and have a creative mind to try to um, reach people in different ways that's awesome so I'm, I'm gonna pick your back your basketball brain a little bit. Right. Um, so for your high school girls, what offensive set do you run? We run several, but we're trying to incorporate the dribble drive. Okay. Um, the I'm trying to remember his name, but the head coach of uh, the Houston women's college team. Um, they perfected. About? Yeah, they've perfected this uh, this type of offense, and I we have a lot of guards, not a lot of bigs, so. Um, we you know, try to do kind of a four round one type mm -hmm. set that allows them freedom, give them some concepts, but some freedom to play. And, um, we do a little bit of a uh, little bit of five out, a little bit of one, four type sets. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 
ideally would love each time down the court on a miss, have them do, you know, the, a transition offense that leads into dribble drive. And then if yeah. the other team makes a shot and maybe call a set play. Yeah. I love that. We, um, we did a similar thing with um, my team back at home. We, we did a dribble drive offense, but we, 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 it, it broke down because our best player was our, our point guard and everyone else on the team was um, just struggling. And so, yeah. and so it was hard to try to um, try to, she was frustrated because she knew that the team was struggling. She was the best player on the team and it was hard trying to get her, um, you know, excited about the game sometimes because, you know, she would be the only one scoring and everyone else would just be kind of scared to put the ball in the basket. So yeah, we, we tried that. We tried a, a couple of things and it just eventually just ended up kind of doing like a street ball thing. Like, Hey, just, <laughs> <laughs> just do your thing, baby. Just do your thing. <laughs> Set four yeah. screens for the point guard and watch her go. <laughs> exactly, but it was it was crazy because some of the girls just couldn't get the the concept of how to draw. I mean, how to you know set a, a solid screen. Um, yeah. We we our best team I believe that we had was um, when we had a a, uh, a girl who was about six two, um, and she played the post. And you know I I taught her everything that she needed to know about how to play the post. Yeah. Um, and that was probably our best team that year because we had um, players that could ball. Um, so it's a little difficult, you know, when you, when you're, you know, getting players and having to adjust with people who have never played basketball sometimes before. Um, yeah. How have you dealt with that? How have you dealt with just, you know, kind of adjusting to some of those things like when you're, when you get a, 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 um, a, a player who hasn't had as much experience playing basketball like that. I tell the assistant coaches to go take them. Uh, not really. No, I, I, I work with them too. Um, I, I think uh, just, I don't think you can over communicate. I mean, there's times when we, we could have gone through something 50 times and there's still questions, but just to try to communicate over and over um, this is why. And, and I, I try to just be upfront and say like, Hey, this next couple of drills we're going to do, these are not that fun as a player. I didn't like them, but as a coach, I know they're important. Here's why we're doing them. You know, even things like that, I think, are helpful. Um, and then, uh, you know, break them off into groups of maybe more advanced. It's what's difficult is you want like your best five to play together, but you also want them to guard each other so they have a challenge. Yeah. So trying to find that balance is uh, a challenge for sure. Yeah. So are you heading down to Florida for the um, NBA bubble, or are you? Um, I am. I am not. I. I basically. Um, I mean, I, I think I could get a pass. I, I can get passes to away games, but my uh, travel's not covered. So I only do occasional away games and I do all the home ones. So mm -hmm. I'll just uh, make sure that I'm uh, watching every uh, Pacer game and, and still doing the live, live tweeting thing and um, yeah. articles and stuff after. Yeah. What are your thoughts with the um, coronavirus and how it has impacted the NBA and, and everything? It's tough. I mean, there's still so many unknowns and I, I just wish that these sports would come out and say, you know, one or the other, like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to play no matter what. And some teams may get hit with this and they, you know, it may obviously impact their season. We're going to move forward. Or I wish they'd come out and say, if, if X, Y, or Z were to happen, that's what would uh, shut us down again, just to give, you know, fans and, and um, us in the media, like an understanding of are we getting hyped for what's coming in a few weeks or are we right. still holding our breath? Like, well, I'll believe it when I see it, if they actually play. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be a lot on the players. I, Florida is a hot spot for COVID, but at the same time, if they truly stay in their bubble and they hold each other accountable, I think they can pull it off, but we'll see. I, I just, I mean, I, I miss sports so much that at this point they could go play, <laughs> they could go play three on three, at a a park hoop without a net on the goal, and I would right. watch it. <laughs> right, you and me, at like in the rest of the world, we just hungry for some sports. But you know, it it is kind of uh, I am kind of nervous though to see how everything will will turn out uh, because you know, of course, with everything going the way it is, and um, it's like the numbers are continuing to spike. You know, I'm mm -hmm. interested to see how you know how they're going to implement this bubble and keep everyone in check because you know these are grown men, you know, they're not, you know, teenagers or, or college kids that you can, you know, kind of keep them in a, in a protective bubble. So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see how they, you know, how they pull this off uh, with those various personalities and, 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 and everything like that. So I'm, 
of course, I, I want to see basketball. I want to see some sports. Um, but, you know, I find it interesting. I found it interesting. You know, this is kind of another question, too, because, like, you know, the other day or yesterday, um, Big Ten said that now they're, you know, only going to do uh, conference games only. Yeah. Um, and that kind of, you know, it, it sounds great, but it do kind of still, like, like kind of leaves you a little weary, too, because leery, too, because ACC said the same thing. Like, we're, we're just going to yeah. do conference games and include um, Notre Dame. I mean, that still includes traveling. That still includes, you know, you know, players and people putting themselves at risk. Um, yeah. With you covering IU, um, do you – how do you feel about, you know, what they're doing as far as, um, you know, for fall sports and everything like that? Yeah, I don't do much football, but I um, – I mean, I still watch it. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's almost like everything that has gone on, there's – to an extent you, you can understand, but also it's like, what's the point sometimes? Like, yeah. uh, I mean, I mean now Indiana can't play ball state who is in Indiana in right. football. And, and a lot of these, I haven't heard officially. I saw one report that said these small schools that were banking on that money, they think they'll still get it because they were under contract. Mm. Hopefully they still do because a lot of those small schools, um, rely on, you know, those, you know, playing the big boys and, and getting that money, that income. Exactly. So hopefully, hopefully they still get that money, but I don't know, like you said, they're still traveling. They're still um, like the virus is not going anywhere. It's going to be around. Um, I mean, even in their own facilities, there's, there's teams that um, will get some of it. So it's like, I don't know for, I, I wish it would just be, it's going to be normal the best we can. If you're at risk, you know opt out or don't don't go be extremely smart here's some guidelines but i just wish it was more of a happy medium i guess <laughs> yeah i do too so all right so we'll jump back into the interview <laughs> the interview <laughs> questions uh just uh, a couple questions left um so how can your why inspire someone else's um to, or someone else to find their why i think um just to be an encourager, just to uh, try to help people understand they have, they have a purpose mm -hmm. um, right now. They currently may be going through like school or a job that they don't like. And they may feel like I don't have a ministry. I don't have, you know, really anything going on. Um, but just, uh, you know, as a scripture, it's encourage one another daily. Um, try to call out the good in people. There's so much negativity of, well, I disagree with what they said, or I don't, you know, they made a mistake. So, you know, see the good in people, bring it out. Um, I love this analogy that um, there's a, a past or an author, Bob Goff. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Mm -hmm. He, he um, in a, a sermon, and I think one of his books, he talked about how Jesus called Peter a rock and then Peter became a rock. Mm. He was not, <laughs> he was not a rock at the time. No. <laughs> Jesus saw that in him. Mm -hmm. And so we need to see the good in people, call out the good in people. And hopefully by your, by our example of living out our purpose, hopefully they can feel like, you know, I can do some of that. I may not have the same jobs, but you know, I can approach each day, um, you know, with, uh, with meaning and purpose and, and uh, helping them, you know, like Ephesians we're we're called to, uh, or we're, we're created to do, you know, his handiwork, exactly. um, we're, we're his workmanship. We're created to do that. So I, there's a part of the book where I say, it's like a, this, a scooter that's in my shed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if I, if I don't write it, then it's not, it's going to quit working. And I think in the same way, our faith, if we don't do what we are created in Christ to do, which right. is to serve and do good works, we're going to be like the scooter in the shed where we just rot away. And we're not, you know, we weren't meant, our faith was not meant to sit in a shed. So we're meant to put it to use. So helping people understand that. I love that. I like that. So um, how can someone find their purpose in God and in life? Um, well, you kind of did just touch on that a little bit, but um, <laughs> so yeah, we'll just go ahead and rock with it. <laughs> how can someone, you know, find their purpose in life? I think a big thing is a question I often ask is what makes you feel most alive? What makes you feel like you're um, being used the most by God mm -hmm. and lean in, lean into those things. 
Um, I've told people before, actually we had a, for our youth ministry, one, one of our, our visions for one of the year years uh, recently was ministry of your own in Montgomery County. We called it Moyo Moco, an acronym, mm. find your own ministry. Like you're and we gave them a list of like 50 op- options, mm-hmm. but you know, if you have one of your own as well, maybe your, your ministry is I'm trying to get more people to the youth group. That can be your ministry. Maybe it's a random acts of kindness, or maybe it's raising money for the water crisis or whatever. Um, just do something, put action to your faith. And, uh, you know, what are, what are you passionate about? Okay. How can you use that passion for the kingdom? There's Mm -hmm. gotta be a way. Otherwise I don't think, you know, I do believe God wants us to enjoy our lives, but he also gave us certain talents and resources for a reason, like the parable of the talents, put it to use. If the person that got five and the person that got two, they both put them to use. They both got the same reward. Yeah. So we all have different, uh, different talents, different resources, but if we put them to use, then that's when he says, well done. Exactly. And that's, that's kind of the whole purpose behind one of faith is to just show that, you know, Hey, we're all, we all have our various talents. We all have our various gifts, but you know, the, the purpose is, you know, for someone to, to watch this, someone who's listening, um, they can be able to say, okay, I could, I can connect with, um, you know, you know, Pastor Tyler Smith, you know, I can connect with what he's doing because, you know, everything that he's doing sounds like something that I would love to do in my future. Or if they're in college right now trying to figure it out, you know, I can connect with um, him being a sports writer. You know, that sounds very interesting and able to balance that along with ministry, along with coaching, you know, and the various hats that you run, that you wear, um, being a husband and, and, and a father, you know, that's, that's a challenge in, itself, in and of itself as well. But, you know, you know, having those, um, those various hats, those various gifts, those various talents, you know, it yeah. helps people to say, okay, if he's able to do it, then I'm able to do it. And it's the same with me, you know, they were to see me or listen to me and say, Hey, well, if TJ's able to do it, you know, Hey, then I can do it. You know, it's just about inspiring and helping people find their true purpose and calling in life and just helping people to understand that, Hey, you know, we all have purpose. We all have gifts. Um, and God has given us those purposes and those, and those gifts and talents. Um, and it's time for us to really put those things to good use uh, for the upbuilding of the kingdom. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. So and honestly, it goes go back to goes back to one of the first things we talked about, too, about having those conversations. Mm-hmm. So we want to be people that, you know, if someone has a question, we're able to talk about it. But I I want to challenge people, be someone who initiates those, not just again, like, you know, Hey, are you going to heaven or hell? You know, like that kind of stuff. I mean, like, <laughs> Hey, you know what, you know, ask a faith type question or get to know somebody that could lead to more questions. Like if you initiate those conversations hmm. and, and then you find out what they, what they're good at, what they're passionate about and say, Hey, Oh, I mean, I think you'd be good at this. Or have you ever considered using that as a ministry, you know, and they're like, make them think a little bit. Yeah. I like that because you know, you, like you say, you can't just go, go in, you know, all fire and brimstone. You know, you have to, you have to build that relationship. You have to build that rapport. Um, and as you know, in youth ministry, you know, a lot of young people, you have to do that with them too. You know, they're not just going to, you know, listen to you. If you, you know, open up the Bible and start reading Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, they'd be like, uh, okay. <laughs> you know, you have to make it relatable. And also, you know, you have to come at them in a more personable manner. Um, where you're trying to build that relationship, trying to build that rapport with them. Um, and I love that, you know, I think that, I think that we could benefit um, as um, people, you know, doing situational based, um, you know, type scenarios when we're encountered with meeting someone and, and how we can, you know, you know, kind of steer the conversation towards, you know, getting to know them, of course, but steer it towards, um, you know, ushering in the gospel in some, you know, unique way. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, like we're trying to, you know, force our religion on them or anything like that. But, you know, it's like you said, you know, I think that you will be good, you know, doing X, Y and Z because you have the skill set to do it. I, you know, you might want to yeah. give it some thought um, or you might want to give it a try. So I love that. I love yeah. that a lot. So. Um, so I want to give this time for you to, you know, talk about your book and talk about um, um, everything about well, with Searching for Seven. Um, and also to allow people to learn more, a little bit more about you. You know, we've had a great conversation. Uh, I want people to, you know, learn a little bit more about you, love on you. <laughs> and um, of course, you know, find, you know, the various ways that they can connect with you. 
um, and your yep. ministry and um, find ways to connect to your book as well. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, this, it's been a, a great process. Um, a lot of fun and, and very rewarding and, you know, just the ability to talk to people from all these different, you know, states and even countries. It's been um, incredible. Um, searching for seven.com is the book's website and you can find the different, you know, Amazon or Barnes and Noble uh, links. Um, if you'd like to purchase There's also a, a Kindle version on there, but really, um, you know, it, it started again as just this offering to God and, and, you know, God use it however you want. Um, I, the thing that I keep coming back to a lot is I, I feel like too many people want God to show up and they want him to reveal himself to them. Mm -hmm. But those same people often do nothing to seek him. And I don't want to be in that category. I want to be looking mm -hmm. for him. I do believe he seeks us and pursues us and will do anything for us to know him. But like any relationship, there's got to be a, a two way street there. You know, I, I can't just say, God, where are you? When my Bible's closed, I never initiate faith conversations. Right. I don't listen to podcasts. I don't listen to, you know, music. I don't, um, like I just, I, I may go to church, but I don't really pay attention when I'm there. Like there's right. so many things that we can be doing to seek him, be aware of him. And then it turns into the, the service side of it. Like I'm, I'm not just supposed to go through my day just to get my work done and, you know, make money and eat and go to sleep. <laughs> there's people all around me and no matter where I am, maybe, you know, start with one person a day. Um, God, give me one person today to share your love with go from there and be aware. So if you're aware of God, you're going to be aware of what he wants you to do and aware of his people. Um, book is a, a quick read, uh, a lot of short, uh, there's 19 chapters, but they're all short. Um, can almost be like a, a daily devotion type or a small group study. We put um, discussion questions in the back if people want to discuss together, but a lot of stories from my life, a lot of sports stuff, but other stuff in life as well scripture that goes with it hopefully some encouragement on on how to look for god in those you know every single um, situation um but yeah searching for seven.com um i'm on twitter at tyler smith underscore isl um and uh personal blog is uh, tylerdsmith.net but i actually speaking of bob goff i pulled a bob goff and put my phone number in the back of the book <laughs> so oh, that's cool <laughs> now i'm i'm not gonna have the millions and millions of uh phone calls and texts that bob goff gets literally <laughs> every day i mean it was amazing he's a new york times bestseller for three books now mm -hmm. and he always puts his phone number in and he always answers if he's not sleeping <laughs> wow um but i put my number in there because to me again it's a conversation it's a uh, like i don't you know if i don't know you and wherever you're from if you have a question let's talk about it if you think my theology is horrible and you want to bash me go ahead. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll know that I've made it if I have some haters out there. <laughs> right. That's the quote, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I invite the conversation on any platform uh, cause we're all in the journey together. I know people are probably sick of hearing that during COVID like we're all in this together, but <laughs> you know, specifically from a faith standpoint, we are, and we need to yeah. act like it and we need to have those conversations. I love it. I love it. And thank you again for taking the time to um, be a part of One Faith um, Radio. And like, I'm excited. I'm super excited to have you on. And I appreciate you for just, you know, opening up your schedule, fitting me in with a, a lot of the other podcasts and, um, you know, the, the media tour that you're on. You know, I appreciate you, you know, taking the time to just speak with me and taking this time to speak to our listeners as well. So thank yeah, you I, once again. I appreciate it. Love what you're doing and I really enjoyed the chat and uh, we'll be, you know, praying for your ministry and your show as well. So I appreciate Thank you. I it. appreciate it. And I'll definitely be praying for you, your book and your ministry. Uh, everyone, please go out and, and purchase a copy of Searching for Seven. Um, it is authored by here, Pastor Tyler Smith, who is an NBA sports writer. He's a pretty cool guy. Uh, he, you know, he, he has a lot going on, uh, but, you know, he put his phone number in the back of the book so that you can call him, fuss him out, or, <laughs> or tell him how much you love him um, about, or, or love the book. So please, you know, you guys, please support him and support his ministry and support everything that he's doing. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,